So if we have a large control volume and we want to look at the consequences of conservation of mass on that large scale or integral control volume, then we need to keep track of all of the stuff that goes in across this surface S and all of the stuff that comes out across this surface S. So this is a control volume. This is an Eulerian way of looking at things. So the change in the mass in the control volume must be equal to the mass in minus the mass out. So the change in the integral over the entire volume, so this is a triple, triple integral over the volume of the density with volume, because the density may vary with location in the volume. That's the change in the mass in the control volume, because this thing inside the square brackets is the mass inside that control volume. Must be equal to the difference between what goes in and what goes out. Well, we saw before that if we take negative V dot N with a normal vector pointing out of the surface, then negative V dot N is the volume flux in. If we multiply it by rho, that'll be the mass flux in per unit area. If we multiply it by the size of a little area on the surface here, that'll be the mass flowing in through that small surface area dA. If we integrate over the entire surface, a double integral over the surface, that will be the rate at which mass is flowing into the control volume. And the V dot N, V dot N will be negative anywhere that the flow velocity is pointing in across the surface and positive anywhere that the flow velocity is pointing out across the surface. So this will make up for, this will keep track of which direction the flow is going across the boundary surface of the control volume. This will have units of mass per unit time, so we'd have to multiply that by delta t to find out how much mass actually went in in some short time delta t. Or if we take delta t to the other side, we wind up with d by dt of the integral over the entire volume of rho dv, rate of change of the mass in the control volume with time, plus the sum of all the mass that went in and all the mass that went out must be equal to zero. So what this is saying for the control volume is that whatever goes in either stays in and increases the mass so that this is a positive rate of change with time. Whatever goes in either stays in or comes out. And this accounts for both the stuff that comes in and the stuff that goes out because the sign changes with the V dot N term. And that must be equal to zero, the combination of the two. So if the density is constant, if the flow is incompressible, then density is constant, it comes out, the integral dV over the volume is just the total volume. And you get the rate of change with time of the density, which is constant, times the volume, which is also constant. Plus the integral over the surface, rho V perpendicular, because that's V dot N times dA equal to zero. So the rate of change of the of volume with time plus the integral over the surface of V perpendicular dA must be equal to zero, dividing through by rho. Now if this control volume is a completely Eulerian control volume fixed in space so it's not getting any bigger, then dv dt is equal to zero. If it's, for example, a balloon, it might be a control volume that's expanding with time, and dv dt might be positive if it's expanding with time, or negative if it's contracting with time. If there's no change with time, then it's zero. And then the integral over the surface of v perpendicular dA must be equal to zero. 
Whatever goes in must be balanced by something coming out. If all the flows are perpendicular to the surface, and we know the average velocities for little chunks of area, and for instance if we have pipes coming into a tank, then we're just going to wind up with the sum of the products of velocity and area equal to zero. And we'll have to take care of the sign on the velocity to know whether it's going into the volume or out of the volume. So that's all we have to do to uh, conserve mass on a large scale.